What's the crack, lads? We're back with yet another player review slash breakdown plus training guide. So hope you guys enjoy this one. We're taking a look at the Liga BBVA MX October League selection. So these players, lads, have one of my favorite players that I've ever used in eFootball 22, and I've kind of forgotten about him, really, is Sergio Canales. This guy is an absolute monster. He's down as an attacking midfielder. I really wish he had about 28, 29 levels, lads, because I, I would have used him, man. I would have used him. He was one of my favorite players to use. He's got one-touch pass. He's got pinpoint crossing. He's got double-touch, chop turn, chip shot control, long-range shooting. Can play right mid, right, mid, right wing, uh, center-back, um, or center-mid, DMF, or attacking mid. I'm all over the place, lads. AMF, CMF, RMF, and right wing. That's where he can play, right? But 23 levels is a bit of a killer on this guy, man. I remember having this guy as a 17-year-old in Pez way back in the day. That would just tell you. He was meant to be the next big thing, right? Um, but he was a beast, and he's a beast in this game, right? And we're going to just take a look at his training guide here when he goes to a 91 overall attack and midfielder. So excellent stats across the board. Doesn't excel in everything, but excellent stats across the board. That's how I would probably say this guy works. Very nice player ID. This Liga BBVA pack is pretty average in my opinion, but we said that we review it because people were asking me. We've also got this guy, Sanchez, who's kind of a more traditional box-to-box. -box. Very let down by the player cards that he has. Doesn't have that many player um, skills that he has with his card. And again, when you train up this guy here, he's only going to go to a 90 overall. 88 defensive engagement, speed and acceleration, balance and stamina are going to get the boost. And of course, his passing and tight possession, dribbling are going to get the boost as well. So it's not a bad card. It's not a terrible card. But I just feel like these cards are a lot of... You know, there's just so many of these on the on the on the standard GP market now, right? That you can't really there's no point really spinning for these unless you have your heart set on spinning for these. That's basically the way I would say it, right? We also have this guy here, um, center back. This guy is interesting. He's on A form, he's got some nice player skills, obviously blocker aerial interception, inter or aerial superiority, doesn't have acrobatic or or um man marking, which is a bit of a killer on him, and he is down a standard form as well. But on his card here, we can actually get his stats really nice. And I always like a versatile center back that is down as either an extra front man or a build-up. I like my versatile guys that have got speed and acceleration around the 75 to 80 mark. It's very nice because you can play out a little bit of ball with them, right? So we also have in this pack Herrera, who's down as a right winger. There's his build there. You've just basically got 90 dribbling, 90 speed, 90 acceleration. I mean, realistically, with the with the way that the training goes up, we don't need that higher than 88 with the manager boost, right? If you want to go that route, and then you would be able to pump it into passing and have 78 finishing as well, which is still a decent card. It's still a decent card there if you wanted to go that route with him. So he's quite decent. We also have Campos. Campos. Uh, he's down as a left back. Again, you've got that boost to his, but again, very average card. Very average card, this guy as well. He's got everything that you could possibly want for a starter squad, but he's not going to really cut it even mid-game, lads. I'll be honest, he's not. Because you're not going to have any blister and pace, any really amazing passing or anything like that, which is a bit of a concern. Now, if you've got your heart set on some of these players, that's great. But there's a lot of duds in here. I mean, this goalkeeper is just average. I mean, you can buy a standard goalkeeper for 100k and he'll outperform him. Same can be said about this right midfielder here. Yes, he's got some high points if he goes the levels. I mean, if you pop 12 into any player that into speed, you're going to get good stats. You're going to get good dribbling. You're going to get good stuff like that. But a lot of these cards can only do one job. They can't really do multiple jobs. So they do kind of train you how to play the game and build players. This guy, again, he's just a target man, as you see there, a fox in the box. He's not even that tall, but he does have good finishing. If you want to blow the finishing there, you can get him to like a 97, 95 quite easily. And of course, you could also boost up his dexterity quite nice, but that's going to be it. There's nothing really else going to be there. And there's only one bald man in my squad, and it is the King Collar. He'll be back soon. We've also got Chavez there and Meneses rounding us off. These guys, again, they're just average speedsters, lads. This guy is kind of an all-rounder right back. But I would say that this uh, Liga MX pack is kind of disappointing if you don't get these two. These two are worth it if you want to clear the agent. You've got a couple of coins. But I just said I'd do this one because people were asking me. You can clear that agent. It ends in six days. Uh, by the time this video comes out, it'll probably be ending in four days, five days. So let me know if you've spun on this or if it's a thumbs down. So yeah, that is it for me. Short and sweet, lads. I would not really recommend this pack either. Listen, if you're starting off and you spin and you get Sergio Canales, you get Frias, you get any of those guys and you're thinking that you can put them into your squad, you can. And they will be better than the standard cards that you start with or the standard cards you spend GP on. But the biggest problem is with these is that you're pumping in a lot of trainer points 
to a player that you could just get for standard GP and it's costing you coins, you know? And coins are hard to come by unless you're actually dishing it out like Monty Burns, um, you know, at an engagement party or something like that. Monty Burns style, if you have loads of coins, that's fine. But if you are being a little bit more free to play or, you know, uh, not spending that coins or you want to grind more, I don't think they're worth it. But I could be mistaken. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll talk to you then.